What up everyone? Back for another video. This time we got our monthly review. All the sus subscription boxes lined up in order so we can put them head to head and see what's best for you. So I asked you in the last video about um, possibly doing each month of subscription boxes so keeping it per month instead of having it all mixed up. Thank you for those of you who weighed in but unfortunately that seems like it's never going to happen because we just received a message from Loot Crate saying their box is going to be even later than they suspected. This is the October box and they told us it would be shipped in mid to late November which is already ridiculously late and now they just announced that it's not going to be shipped until late December at the earliest which probably means early January. So our October box won't be here until the following year, which is just crazy. It's absolutely ridiculous that it's taking that long, but what are we gonna do? So we're gonna do all the other boxes and we're gonna keep it per month, except for Loot Crate. It's just gonna be an Outlander. It's gonna be out of place, but whatever. And honestly, it, it just seems like a really bad sign of things to come. I've seen this happen too many times before this exact situation where companies get behind on their boxes and then all of a sudden they can't fulfill orders and then they file for bankruptcy and they just kind of take everyone's money and never return it. Uh, Nerdblock did that same thing where they just stretch themselves out too thin and they can't fill the orders. I don't think that'll happen with them because they're owned by NECA now, which is a huge company. So I think worst case scenario, they would just close that department of their company. So I don't think it'll be that bad, but it's just a bad sign of things to come. So hopefully it doesn't come to that. But anyway, um, other than subscription boxes, if you ever have any questions, feel free to post them here. Not just about monthly subscription boxes, just collecting in general. If you ever need any advice, any uh, investment advice on collectibles, where to find things, how to get things, prices things should be at, feel free to post comments here. I'm an absolute encyclopedia when it comes to all that kind of stuff, so feel free to pick my brain about that. It's free knowledge, so feel free to post any comments or questions here, and I will answer them in whatever fashion is appropriate. So, without further ado, in no particular order, let's get into the box. First, Marvel Collector Core. We got the Shang-Chi box right there. Stay open. So we get the usual biz here. Same old stuff we always get. Got a t-shirt. There it is. You know, pretty basic. And I, I've said it once and I say, I'll say it again. I've said it a million times. I wish they wouldn't do the pop tea style. I really wish they would do more of the comic book classic style. They used to do it a long time ago and they stopped. I get why because they're advertising for pop figures. I get it. But I wish they would just do classic comic style. I would love these shirts a million times more if they just did regular comic style on the t-shirts. I would wear them. But I have so many of these pop tees. I'm so over it. Like I never keep these shirts anymore and they don't sell well. So they really should think about changing up their style. So this will get the standard $12 to $15 value, and as far as a score on the shirt, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. It's not horrible, but it's like just very ordinary and plain. I'm not a big fan of the color. The quality of the shirts on Pop Tees are decent, not great, so, you know, 6 out of 10 on that. Next, we got some Pop figures. Shang-Chi himself, right here. Very basic. I've noticed this a lot recently. The the characters and figures they put in here are always very basic. They save their special colors and poses and things like that for the store shelves because they want to make money. And I don't think they make that money much money with this box. So the figures we get in here, as of lately, have been just very ordinary and plain. So that's kind of what we see here, just a very standard pose. But it fetches a decent amount. This is going for about 25 to 27 It was a really popular movie, and he's becoming a very popular character. So not too surprising, but yeah, decent value on that. His sister, on the other hand, not so much. This we're only getting about a $14 to $15 value. But I feel like that may change. I feel like she's going to become a more popular character in the near future because she's um, obviously set up to do more in the MCU. So I feel like down the line, this may have a more of a resurgence in value. But for right now, $14 to $15. Then we got a little sticker. Morris, this two butts. So this is going for about five to six bucks. Decent for a sticker. And then we got our pin. Same thing I always say, I really wish they would put backings on this. They would be so much more valuable, so much more collectible, significantly so if they just put a little backing on it. It would cost them next to nothing in costs and labor. It would be very easy to do and it would make all the difference. So I really wish they would, 
but they don't listen to me and they don't care so for now five to seven bucks on that so that brings our value on the low end 61 on the high end about 70. So overall, good box. Uh, nothing mind blowing here, but you know that's decently double the value. This comes out to about a thirty dollar box, depending on where you live, depending on shipping and your state taxes. Roughly a thirty dollar box. So even on the low end, you're getting double the value. All exclusive, really cool stuff, and you knew the characters that were coming into it. So that pretty much well done. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Because again, not mind blowing. I'm not over the moon over everything here, but good value, good quality, exclusivity. Hit all the points, so 8 out of 10. Why not? So that's Marvel Collector Core. Alright, next on the list, we got Geek Fuel. If I can open this fucking thing. There we go. Alrighty. So this one, we got a shirt too. Here we are. Ghostbusters. Pretty basic. They put a little like neon texture to it to get it a little updated. But Geek Feel has the best quality shirts. Of all the subscription boxes, the quality of these shirts are really great. So I, I really do appreciate that. I often wear Geek Feel shirts because they're so nice and quality. So as far as a, sh a score on the shirt, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. Because the design's not like, again, not mind-blowing. It's pretty basic. But the quality on the shirt's so nice that I'll wear it. And that'll get the standard $12 to $15 value. Then we got something new called Mondoids. Right off the bat, you'll notice the package is pretty messed up because for some reason, Geek Feel is against doing different size boxes. They used to. They used to have different size boxes to fit different stuff, but now they've stuck to one size and they wanted this in there, so they just crammed it in there and it got really damaged in the process, which is really a poor move. I'm very disappointed that they would do that because this is a really nice figure. So I'll give you a close up. I've never heard of these before. I would seen them briefly, but the quality on these is really fantastic. The paint job, the sculpt on them, really, really well done. I was very impressed. It's still a really weird item because it's just a big head on a stand, but still, the, I, I can't deny the quality on it. It's, it's really fantastic. And these go for a decent amount. They valued it at 20 and this one's 20 but you had the option. It was either Green Goblin or Venom. And of course, I don't get the one I want. I would have loved Venom. He's one of my favorite characters. That one goes for almost double that. That one goes for like 40 This one goes for about 20 but with a damaged box, probably a lot less. So... They really should spend a few extra cents and get some different size boxes because this is just like, this is, kind of makes me sad a little bit. And they've been doing that a lot lately. So, but the quality on these is very nice. What else we got? So we got only two more items. Again, I don't know what's going on with this company. They were doing so well for so long, but they've been kind of dwindling lately. So we got our pin pals here. And this arrived really damaged too. So there was a lot of scratches on it and a lot of corners were folded over and tears on it because it just wasn't packaged well. Everything was just thrown in there and it jostles around a whole bunch. And yeah, this came really damaged, which I'm bummed because this is really cool. It looks like the Nintendo game and looked really nice, but it's just really beat up. So this actually goes for like 15 to $20. It's a very nice pin, but they just got to take a little better care of their stuff. And the last thing was a sticker, which, you know, two to three dollars who cares about that so for the longest time they were like all these other boxes where you get like five items and I feel like that's kind of the standard and lately they've been giving four and now it feels like more like three it feels like three items in a sticker so I don't know what's going on with this company I feel like they're struggling though which is unfortunate because they were doing so great they really had an amazing box and it's just been kind of dwindling and dwindling and dwindling so I feel like that means they're just struggling. They're not getting enough subscribers, they're not getting enough money, which is so unfortunate because they had such potential. So this may be a sign of things to come. Geek Fuel may be on its way out, which is such a bummer. They had the best shirts. They always had the best picks on stuff. They pick things that I would have picked out. They really pick things that are based on quality. They really have a good company, but for some reason they're just not getting the support they need, which is so unfortunate. So I'd be really bummed to see this company go, but it is what it is. So as far as value, on the low end, 49, on the high end, 58. So, you know, uh, eh, not quite double the value. This ends up being, again, around a $30 box. So not quite double, but 
decent picks on everything. They had good quality picks. But again, things arrive so damaged, it's hard to give it a, a good score. So I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. I really like the stuff in there and the quality is really nice. But when everything arrives broken, then who cares? When it's all damaged, it doesn't care how nice the quality was when they put it in. If it arrives, all beat up. And same thing with this box. This is, this is like permanently damaged. It's creased in areas that can't be fixed, which is so unfortunate. So it just seems like there's a lot, a lot less care from this company because, again, they're probably just struggling. So very unfortunate. I hope things turn around for this company. I hope things get better, but we'll see. For now, 6 out of 10, Geek Fuel. All right, next. Bam box. This company's not going anywhere. So, we got our standard autograph and art print. This time around, we got Matthew Demerit. So, there's a little confusion on this. They On the description card, it said the person who played E.T. So, my first thought was, oh, it must have been like the voice actor or something like that. But that's not what it is. I had recently done research on him from a separate thing and I, I knew what he did. He's actually the puppeteer, kinda. He's the in-suit actor for E.T. So a little uh, story about him, he actually doesn't have any legs. So I'm assuming he was born that way, I don't know. So he's just in arms and a torso. And how E.T. walked, how he wobbled around, that was him standing on his hands. And if you go on Google, you can see a little diagram of it. It was basically his body and then his hands were below, and that's how E.T. walked. It was this guy walking on his hands, so he gave him that kind of classic wobble. So that's who this is. It's the in-suit actor. I'm not sure if you'd classify that as a puppeteer, but uh, they kind of give him different names over time. But that's who that is, so if anyone's curious, not the voice actor, the in-suit puppeteer. So there's that. And the value on that's going to be roughly $30. And that's pretty standard. Uh, autographs usually go anywhere from $20, $25, $30. It's usually somewhere in that range. This one's $30. So then we got our art print. And this one's not by anyone particularly famous. Uh, so this isn't going for much. It's only going to go for a $10 to $12 value. Looks cool. Hellboy signed and numbered, which is nice. But again, uh, I'm... I'm kind of leaning away from their art prints because they just haven't been great in a pretty long time. They've stopped getting like really famous artists and the art prints are just kind of there. It's hard to sell them. The names aren't really well enough. And sometimes you get a cool picture, but that's just kind of it. Like it's, it's just not something super special. In my opinion, I feel like they should kind of move away towards that and kind of fill it with something else. I don't know what, but it's just, it's, it's been so lackluster lately. I think it's time to just kind of move on from that. And then they got these artist cards. Same thing. Like, it's fine that it's in there. It's not like it's a bad thing, but really doesn't add much to it. Like, 5 to $6, which is, I would never pay that, but some people do, so it gets a 5 to $6 value. A little Slimer fan-made card. Then, got a pin. And this one's, again, pretty lackluster as well. Nothing really special about it. It's very, very basic. The Umbrella Corporation logo. Usually, they're pretty good about pins. They have some really detailed pins, but this one is, again, just... A little bit lackluster. Nothing super special about it. And then our last item was a prop replica. This is the badge from V for Vendetta. I actually really love that movie, but I don't even remember seeing this badge in particular. I'll have to go back and watch it to see how accurate it looks. But same situation where the prop replica, like it looks nice, but that's a pretty old movie and it's a very specific thing. Like the badge I'm sure was in the movie, but I don't think it was like a prominent thing in the movie to merit a replica so it's it's well done but they should probably put a little more thought into the prop replicas they're doing maybe something a little more relevant so again just kind of it's it's nicely done but again a little lackluster so that seems to be the overall theme for this box but as far as value on the low end 67 on the high end 73 so this is closer to a $40 box again give or take depending on where you live state taxes all that stuff so it might be a little over 40 so that's uh, not really uh, it's pretty close like pr three quarters the value not quite double but pretty close to it and again the most of these things in here were, were very lackluster they weren't horrible I'm not complaining they're not bad in any way but they were just kind of there like okay like I see what you were going for but meh so as far as the score, I'm going to give it a 5.5 out of 10. 
it, they did a good job. Things in here were nice, but nothing to be overly excited about. I think the main selling point was the Matthew Demerit signature, but again, not exactly a big name person. It's still cool to hear his backstory, and I'm totally psyched to have his autograph. I'll keep it because he just has a cool story in general. He seems like a really cool guy, but not someone you would know by name, or, and you kind of had to do a little research to figure out exactly what he did anyway. So, 5 out of 5 out of 10 on that. All right. Speaking of autographs, we got Zobi, a highly requested box. So let's see what we got here. Whoops, scratching at the door. Hold on. And now Whoops going to be distracting because you're a bad boy. All right, so we got a shirt. And the Zobi shirts, I gotta say, are not super great. So this is the shirt, not a bad design or anything. And if you didn't get the reference, that's from Stand By Me. So I like the reference, but again, a little too subtle on the reference. I, I do like the subtle references, I've said that before. A little too subtle. You'd have to really get in there and really want to read this shirt to appreciate it. So I think they need to work on the designs a little bit. And they also print them on the Gildan brand, which is just about as low on quality as you can get. These have been notoriously poor shirts. They're just very thick and rough and not fitted, and there's a lot of poor things about them, so it's just about as cheap as you can get. It'll still get the standard $12 to $15 value, but as far as the score on the shirt, it's only gonna get a three out of 10. So again, I, I like it, I like the reference, but very, very plain, very boring. Again, lackluster. And the shirts they've had before were the exact same thing, were nothing special, very, very cheaply done. So it's just kind of there, it's just filler, so whatever. All right, then we got an autograph from Andrew McCarthy. Now he's been in a few things. He did some things in the 80s, but he's done some more modern stuff too. Um, I didn't think this would go for very much, but this actually was going for 25 to $30. And they had autographs listed. I saw a lot of them for a much higher price, which I'm not really sure why. Like a lot of the uh, auctions and prices that I saw to sell something like this was closer to 100 bucks, which I was kind of surprised by because it really doesn't seem like it'd be worth that. But so I saw it for cheaper prices, so I'm gonna give it a 25 to 30 dollar value. Then, and here comes Wolf. Thank you. Then we got a prop replica, a coin from Coming to America. Actually really nice quality. This is a very nice prop replica. I've been getting more and more into coins, like collectible coins. I've been keeping them and putting them on display. And this is very nicely done. Same thing, where I saw um, coins like this online for like $3,000, which I'm assuming were actual prop replicas, but there were a bunch of them on there, which I was really surprised by. But this one in particular, going for like somewhere between 20 and 40 dollars so that's the price around that but it's very nicely done proper of the quality on it's very nice then we got the pin i actually got the rarer one they were both from goonies and i always have the worst luck the whenever i get the upgraded one i always like the regular one better and vice versa so this was only of out of 100 the other one was 400 but the, the regular one's going for uh, around a $20 to $25 value, so that's the score on that. So on the low end, 77, and on the high end, 110. This is closer to a $50 box. It's like the mid 40s to high 40s, so around $50, but pretty close to double the value depending on what you would base it on. And that prop up code was really nice. Pin, very nicely done, very nice pin. Autograph was a, it's, you know, it's a somewhat well-known person. Kind of depends on your personal interest, but you could have an interest in it. Shirt sucked. Shirt was a piece of crap. But other than that, well-rounded box and pretty decent on the value. So I'm going to give this a 6.5 out of 10. I think they should either do away with the shirts or find like a better designer quality on it. So I think that's something they can improve on. Other than that, pretty well-rounded and yeah, good box. 6.5. Quit it. Almost done. All right, next. Got another BAM box. The BAM comic box. So 
I only wanted to try one of these and I got charged twice before they um, sent the first one so I got two and then they announced uh, a new box and uh, and I got that one too against my better judgment now I'll, I'll talk about why in a minute so this it's pretty standard what you get in the box a they call it a slabbed comic I say graded comic and then you get a copy of that same comic that's not graded and then you get a little mount for it so nothing super crazy you'll get the standard stuff so the comic was punchline which if I'm not mistaken is somewhat of a new character just kind of the new ish Harley Quinn kind of similar to that so there we go we got this one right here's the slab one and a very similar one there so I'm going based on what it would cost to get this on my own so this comic on its own was going for like 10 to 15 bucks the white version actually goes for like 30 bucks so it's much more expensive and then as far as the grading on the comic I'm putting it at roughly forty dollars there's a lot of variation in there because there are so many things that depend on that value it depends on shipping where you live the the certification there's so many variables in there so I'm just gonna generalize and say forty dollars for all the grading and everything included and then the autograph Frank Cho very well-known artist he's very popular I knew who he was I have some of his art in my house so his autograph is actually um, pretty nice. So it'll get a $25 value, much like a lot of these band box signatures. So that's someone I appreciated. The last box had the story writer, and it was a terrible choice. But this time they got an actual um, artist in there, so I appreciate that. And then the mount is only like 10 bucks. So factoring all those numbers in, on the low end, 115 on the high end, 120 So this is a, this one was a $90 box, so nowhere near double the value, not even close, and I don't think it ever will be. So this box wasn't really worth it to me, and that's why I only got one of them, because it's just a huge gamble. You're essentially getting what you paid for, because if you were to find this stuff on your own and pay to get it graded and do all that thing, then it would probably cost you a little more than this box, but you don't know what's coming in here. So it could be a comic you like, could be an artist you like, could be someone you've never heard of before, and then it's wasted money. So I would have said pass on this box, and also the CBC, I said in the last video, that they should really switch to CGC because they're just much more notoriety, they're worth a lot more money. So again, I feel like Bambox does watch my videos because they do take my advice, the next time they're doing this box, which is the December box, they are switching to CGC. And I said they should try to get exclusive covers, and that one they are getting an exclusive cover. So they they made a big announcement saying that uh, this new box is coming, all that stuff, and they're saying the really competitive price, like no one can beat our price. So I'm like, oh my gosh, that's great. They listened to me. They're, they're switching to CGC, they're getting exclusive covers, and they're going to be cheaper. But uh, silly me, I checked in on it, and they're actually boosting the price there so it's going to be even more expensive it's going from a $90 box to a $100 box so when they said no one can compete with our prices it's like well yeah no one's going to charge that much that's a crazy high price but at least they're going in the right direction I think it's a smart move switching to CGC I think it's really smart getting exclusive covers so I again against my better judgment I signed up for that one box and already canceled it because I'm just curious because if it's an exclusive cover with an exclusive signature then that could be worth a significant amount of money so I'm going to try it out one more time just to give people an idea of what it's gonna be but don't get your hopes up because I highly 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 doubt they're going to get exclusive covers every month or even some somewhat often so it's probably gonna be a one-off thing where they get an exclusive cover and then down the line they may get another one so long-winded story I know lots to talk about so for this box, I'm giving it a 5 out of 10 because it's it's not bad. You're getting what you're paid for. It's not like it's bad things in here. It's good choices and they're getting good signatures. But again, it's just too much of a gamble to throw away $100 every month. It's a monthly box for 100 bucks. So I'm going to try out that next one and we'll have a final opinion of it. I think I'm going to do a separate video for it so that way people can refer to it. But as of now, that box, 5 out of 10. All right, the last one. We got the Culture Fly box. Now, to sum up, this company does a lot of different boxes. I've tried out pretty much all of them and I kind of cycle through. I'll probably try some more in the future, but this is the only one I found is really worth the value or worth the, the money. So this is the Pusheen box and they have 
They have a Dragon Ball one, which I tried. They already canceled that. They have a DC one. They just on and on and on. So this one is the only one I found is really worth getting. So we'll go through these items and talk about that. So get an article of clothing, but this is a more expensive box, so we get more expensive items. We usually get a sweater or a jacket of some kind. And then we got Lil Pusheen is a ghost. Ta -da. So yeah, nice and quality. And the value on that is actually going to be $25 to $30, which is good. That's a really good amount. That's pretty much what they cost in stores, and that's what they're selling for online. So one of the great things about this box is if you don't like something in there, super easy to sell online, super easy to get rid of. The stuff in here is very collectible, very valuable. So $25 to $30 on that. Then we got a little glass cup. Take it out. And this is what they call a double walled glass cup. And that's basically so you can put hot stuff in there. So you can see there's the layer on the inside and then there's the outer layer. So you can put something hot in there and not burn your hand or something cold and vice versa. So that's really cool. Nice quality, nice design. The value on that's going to be around $15 to $20. So very nicely done. Then we got a little candle in here with the remote. So I thought this changed colors, which it, I really wish it would have, but it doesn't. It just kind of does an on-off type of thing. But, you know, it's still fun to have a candle with a remote. That actually goes for $15 to $20 as well. Then we got a figure. Same thing, Pusheen is a ghost. That goes for like $20 to $30. Like I said, just like the, the Sanrio box. It's just the stuff is very collectible and very sought after. So decent value. Then we got some socks. These are going for $10 to $15. Then we got a little hat, a little beanie, and that is going for around $15. Then we got a little garland. This is the only thing that's really on the cheap brand, 10 bucks. And yeah, that was it. So this is the really the cheapest thing in here, the only thing that would be considered filler, and this is actually, again, decent quality. You'd probably pay $10 for that in the store. So on the low end, the value on this box is $125. On the high end, $160. So as I was saying previously, this company is great. They really do high quality stuff. They really put stuff in there that you're not getting anywhere else. And instead of goofy, really plain t-shirts, they usually put like jackets and sweaters and, and things like that that are very different and very high in quality. So they really put the work in there. But the problem with a lot of the other boxes, it's just not a high resale market. So luckily it's, it's themed so well, so if you're a big fan of DC, like, yeah, you'd probably keep the stuff because you like it, but um, I always value it on what the resale value is because not that I don't like the stuff, but as you can see here, I have limited space, so a lot of it has to either be given away or sold. So it's just nice to know when you order from a company that it's a mystery box, but if you have confidence in them that it's gonna be good, even if you don't like or want something, you should have no problem selling it online or giving it to someone as a gift. So this box does it very well. This turns out to be like a $60 box, again, depending on where you are, roughly $60. So even on the low end, you get double your value easily. Pusheen's just still to this day such a popular character, it's just like Hello Kitty, anything with it, or like Mickey, anything with the face on there is just immediately worth money. So that's good. And I wanna try out some of their other boxes. They have an office one and a friends one. So I, I might try those out somewhere down the line, but from my experience, the other boxes haven't really been worth it. So as far as a score on this one, I'm giving it an eight out of 10. Really well done, a ton of stuff in here. So many items in here, what is it? Seven different items, all of good quality, all of good value, all things that are just very well-rounded and well done. So good job, I, I really like it. They did a good job there. So I can't wait to see the next one. This is a quarterly box, by the way, so it only comes four times a year. So those were the boxes of October. I can't remember if I mentioned it at the beginning of the video. Those were October's boxes. November will be a much smaller month. It'll probably only have the three um, monthly boxes if Loot Crates ever shows up, who knows. But yeah, those are the boxes there. Again, let me know if you have any questions at all about these boxes to see things and what things were, or again, collecting advice, like how to get things, value otherwise, things like that. Feel free to pick my brain at any time, post some comments there. Other than that, we'll see you on the next video. I'm not quite sure what it'll be. I'm gonna be taking a vacation soon, um, so I won't be around to do a review of Spider-Man, but 
I'm sure there will be something else to do. So once again, thank you all for watching and supporting. Thank you for all the people that weigh in and give comments. I appreciate it so much. And we'll see you on the next video. Love you all. Peace.